We're gonna oh, have some fun. fun. Yay! All right. This is like flowing man. So like during the '60s, you know, I was alive in the '60s. And you guys were like in a flow, all right? This is super important because unless you have eidetic memory and you're like a hella smart, I've never met anyone on the planet that matches this. And I've known national champions. I've known top speakers of national championships. Nobody does this activity without having a flow. Because if he's talking to me at a PMC, Prime Minister Constructive, and 30 minutes later, I'm trying to recall something he did that's going to have a material impact on the round, and I can't recall that, as they say on the Big Bang Theory, and I always love to say this, you are an inclined plane helically wrapped around a central axis. That is not good. Okay? So you need to be able to recall these things with the assistance of the written flow. Okay? Uh, what I'm going to do to you to do to you, I can do that. Sorry. What I'm going to do with you today, what I'm going to do with you today is walk you through the basics of flowing. Okay? I'm going to do some things on the assumption that you've never really done this before. I've given you some material we may not be able to go through in its entirety, but you're going to have lives beyond this unless there's a nuclear holocaust and somebody drops a bomb in the next 45 minutes. So you're going to be able to go and look at some of this afterwards, but. Uh, we are going to show you what flows look like, explain how to get those results, and more importantly, explain to you some functionality and motivate you as to what the function of a flow is and what it's going to be able to do for you. Because if you don't really believe what that flow is going to be able to do for you, you're not inclined to go through the effort to get good at it. Okay? So let's start at the beginning. What does a flow look like? That is a flow. Now, that's the first page of a flow. Now, it's not important for you to read any of these numbers there or any of these letters, but you just kind of need to go, oh, that's what it is. And I want you to notice a couple characteristics of this. You'll notice they are arranged in columns, OK? Columns enable you to track a particular argument through all six speeches of the debate. Do not finish here and go up to the top. Now, in this instance, you'll notice that I've got different colors, black for affirmative and blood red for the vampire tearing into the flesh, which is what a negative always does. It attacks, okay? Now, the other thing is don't look at this and get all weirded out because this is a judge flow, not a debater flow. A debater obviously has more important things to do, like plan their speech and get things aligned. So this is pretty comprehensive because all I have to do is just sit there and look at you and write down what you say, and then write down what she says, because she's attacking you, okay? I, on the other hand, don't have to get up and give a speech, okay? So that's kind of what it looks like. Simplified columns. Prime Minister Constructive, Leader of Opposition Constructive, Member of Government Constructive, Member of Opposition Constructive. These four speeches are the constructives. Then leader of opposition rebuttal, prime minister rebuttal. These are the rebuttals. Okay? So if you get down to the bottom of that first speech and you need a second piece of paper, then you get a second piece of paper. Now, I'm going to qualify that just a second here, but as the general rule, is everybody clear on that? Okay? Now, Let's take a look at the next slide here. I want you to pretend that these are separate pieces of paper. They are, but they're separate flow pieces of paper. All right? So when you are flowing the leader, the, excuse me, the prime minister constructive, you're going to get background information and advantages. Remember Sasan was talking to you about that? I'm assuming he gave in the part I didn't hear that background information. Spoiler alert. Every policy round you do is going to look kind of like this. There's going to be an observation one with resolutional analysis. And all that means is we have a policy debate today because of the presence of an active verb. Okay? Got that? Two, my definitions are either contextually defined or as follows. Three, I got a weighing mechanism through which to evaluate this. It's called all-inclusive net benefits. That basically means you get access to feminism, racism, life, death, money, whatever. Put it all on the table and we'll weigh it out at the end. Okay? 
And then with a policy route, you're gonna have P, plan. Now, my suggestion to you is you put this on the first piece of paper, okay? The second piece of paper, with the Prime Minister still talking, is gonna be the advantage. And if there's a second advantage, I put that on a third piece of paper. Now, some of you are thinking, oh my God, the trees are dying. This is not a friendly activity for the environment. We kill a lot of trees here. But the functionality of these separate pieces of paper enables you, when the debate gets deep into rebuttals, to effectively and quickly order the speeches based on the material presented. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get down to maybe even in constructives, and the member of government is going, a member of opposition is going to go, okay, uh, roadmap on time. Uh, drop the topicality, drop disadvantage two, I'm only going to go for disadvantage one. So my order is going to be disadvantage one, counter plan, then back to the case. I'm going to do advantage two in order and then for three. So you can shuffle these cards like a blackjack dealer and know exactly what order he's going to go in. If you don't have them on separate pieces of paper, it's going to be a mess. Okay? So there's functionality for killing these trees. Okay? So, after the Prime Minister's speech, you got an advantage or two, and you got resolution analysis, background, and plan. Okay? Now, the leader of opposition constructive is the second debate, debater. That goes eight minutes. You're probably going to want three more pieces of paper, at least, to flow this kind of stuff. Okay? Now, it's possible that you're simply going to have a straight refutation of what he said here, in which case you go back and you use that column thing, okay? So here was the definition of terms. Let's say the leader of opposition contests that definition of terms. Where would you put that? Right next to the original definition of terms. Duh. Okay? But assuming you're not doing a straight line-by-line -line refutation of the particulars of the advantage and the particulars of the case analysis, you're probably going to have what are called off-case positions. Now, maybe you haven't been introduced to these yet, but you will be. Essentially, off-case positions are the offense that are generated by the negative. Okay? And they consist of things like topicality. How many of you have heard of the word topicality? Okay? How many of you have heard of disadvantages? How many of you have heard of counterplans? Okay? So that's where this stuff goes. I know because I talked to you the other day. All right? So I want separate pieces of paper for these two. Because sometimes the counterplan may get kicked, throw it away. Sometimes the DA might get kicked unless there's offense on it. Maybe throw it away. Okay? Even though this is a little bit outside what I'm supposed to be doing with you, shh, don't tell. I will tell you straight up you want to do them in this order. If you're the leader of opposition, you want to do them in this order. Because topicality is basically a kill shot, and if you win topicality as the opposition, you win the whole round, you want to put that first, because that's the most important thing. The reason you put the disadvantage second is that immediately gives that judge a view into what's really hella bad about that further proposal against which you can weigh the benefits that they've so carefully, carefully outlined in the advantage. Okay? The reason you want the counter plan third and last is because you will often build upon that disadvantage which is unique to the plan, but not to the counter plan. Okay? Let that sink in for a second. You have a disadvantage which is unique to the affirmative case. Okay? If you have a counter plan, a means of getting their benefits through potentially an alternate agent, or alternate mandates, but that is not the resolution, the fact that they have a hell of a bad disadvantage and you can solve all their problems makes it easy for the judge to go, wow, well, let's take this non-resolutional option that solves all the affirmative harms and doesn't strap itself to the time bomb that is destruction of the universe affiliated with the affirmative. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, Again, you don't need to see the actual letters and numbers, but this gives you an idea. By the way, I stretched this just because I wanted to take up more space. These actually started off as eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, but I like photoshopped it. Yeah. 
something like that. All right? Kind of what like they do in women's magazines to make these 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 people that don't actually they're not really women at the point when they Photoshop them in that way. I've seen models in print that I then meet in person. They're not the same human being. In fact, little help, little, I'm diverting, but so what? I've got 35 minutes. I think I can do this. My sister <laughs> was an editor at Vogue magazine in New York. You've all heard of Vogue. It's just like fashion thingy. All right. She told me, she says, you give me any of your women students, any woman student, and with the facilities and the wherewithal I have at my disposal, I can turn any of them into a cover girl. Now, this is an editor of Vogue, for God's sakes. She's not making this up. She has no reason to tell me that. So, I've Vogified. <laughs> These, if you see the actual pieces of paper, they don't really look like that, just like the models in Vogue. They don't really look like that. All right, so what you have here is a bunch of sheets of paper with the columns that go across, and you'll notice some of the stuff stops. That's because the debaters drop it. Sometimes people will raise topicality because of what's called a time suck, meaning I can spit it out there in one minute, and it's going to cause the affirmative and the member of government constructive to spend two minutes to get rid of it. Ha ha, I just want a minute. I netted out a minute. I sucked a minute of his time away from him to otherwise deal with my arguments. Okay? So we clear on that? All right. So let's go to functionality here. We know what a flow looks like. Let's talk about functionality. And by the way, you, before you spend too much time killing brain cells, go to page six of your handout. You will notice that the bald old man at the front of the room gave you the slides. So it's already written out for you. So you can focus on absorbing. All right, so it's right there. You can supplement it with little stuff you want to stick in there, but it's right there in front of your face. Okay? You're welcome. Everybody say thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. That's my job. All right. So, yes. Oh, in a non history channel way. Don't raise your hand that way to me, Hitler. Okay, what? <laughs> we didn't get one? That's because you're late, but I'll give you one anyway, because I've got extras. Here you go. They're available on eBay too. They get five cents out. Yes. Really? No, not really. Oh. I sell the answers to my tests on eBay. That's how I have to drive a car. I do. Really? No. <laughs> All right. So we good? Let's take a look at this. I want you to get this in your brain. Number one, it is a memory aid. We already talked about this. You are not that smart that you don't need a flow. I know some of you are like hella smart. You're not that smart. You need to be able to remember, oh my god, yeah, he defined it in the first speech as blank. Okay? Two, it's an organizational aid. You already know you got these separate pieces of paper uh, that enable you to put, uh, let, me, let me reinforce this up here. You got these separate pieces of paper that enable you to see what is going on. This is the advantage. This is the counter plan. Okay? And so you look at this stuff. Get it out. Mark, I want your cells for 30 seconds before I get myself arranged. So, what do you think he's arranging? Um, well, we're ready. Mr. Our conversation will be forever with more than one. Like people watching this online, you really give a shit about Yeah. Why do you give a shit about this? We, we're only saying this because you can't see our face. Well, obviously, we've got a lot of money. I've seen on the slideshow. The whole thing. Oh, yeah. But not necessarily why it has to be. Oh, yeah. I thought we agreed they kind of be right. Yeah. Well, he's the only one who actually made something. Like, debatable. Debatable. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I'm back. So, organizational aid. If you have separate pieces of paper, you can literally whip that stuff out. So when somebody goes, okay, go to the first advantage, bingo, you know where the first advantage is. Or go to the counter plan, or go to the counter plan. Okay? It's all right there on separate pieces of paper in separate columns as you progress through the debate. Okay? Say what? Right, remember, each piece of paper has columns. So in other words, when the topicality argument is listed, that's brought up by the second speaker, okay? Leader of opposition. So obviously there's nothing that came before that. No affirmative is going to say, hey, we're not topical. <laughs> no, they're not going to even mention topicality. They're going to talk about how they're within the resolution, maybe through their plan. But the counter plan or the disadvantage or the topicality sheet of paper is going to start with the leader of opposition constructive column and then the member of government, okay? okay. So two, three, four, five, okay? Yeah? Would you use this if you're the negative or if you're like... Oh yeah, this is the way you flow. When you are flowing, it always looks like this. You may have not have anything in the prime minister column because the prime minister didn't raise it, but the leader of opposition raises it in his off-case material. And that's why these are up here for you to visualize as separate pieces of paper, okay? Because if you're responding to the definitions, that's going to go on the first page of the Prime Minister's flow. If you're talking about the advantage, that goes on the advantage flow. If you're talking about the counter plan, on the counter plan flow, yeah? So are we given pieces of printer paper before the round? You should if you've got a good program. Yeah, you, your, your, your coach should be bringing reams of paper to the, uh, to the, to the route so that you can head off with it. And, 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 and by the way, I suggest, because sometimes coaches forget, you should go to bed Thursday or Friday night before you get in the van the next day. Just know I am autonomous, I have enough piece of paper, don't expect them to give it to me. Okay? We'll talk a little bit about the mechanics and, and what you need in, in a minute. That's also listed on that sheet I just gave you. You need special pens. You need uh, paper. You need all that. Because you, you should have a stopwatch. Okay. All these are kind of things that you want to go out to Kmart and get yourself a clock and a timer so that you can time your speech and not rely upon somebody saying, oh, well, here's a timer. You could use it. And we can't use our phones for timing? Sometimes you can. Some judges are a little weird. Most, I would say 99% of judges will let you use your phone. But for God's sakes, don't be co coach. What's the argument to this killer argument in round? Don't do that. Um, yeah. Just as you know, just so you know, in parliamentary debate, you are not allowed to bring anything into the round that you use that is not generated by your hand or your partner's hand. So if your coach hands you a disadvantage and says read it and bring it into the round, that's wrong. Can we use stuff? You can copy it. That's that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, no, it has to be generated during prep. Okay. Okay. Everybody get that? Yeah. Your material, your written material that you bring to the round is generated by you or your partner's hand during prep. I saw a team at the state championships get DQ and throw up, they lost the round because he literally got up there and read from a dictionary in the round. And he got reported and he lost the round. He was taken to the ounce bud, they complained, the team was dropped. Okay. Next, this one talks about revealing opponents' weaknesses. If you've got a clear record of the debates, the arguments that have been raised, it enables you to sort of stand back and go, whoa, that doesn't look entirely right. And in fact, there's an example in the handout I gave you that we're going to see during a flow exercise that we're going to have done here uh, in the next 25 minutes. So it does a couple things in revealing weaknesses. First, it illuminates the position, okay? Sometimes when you see it written out, okay, it's going to trigger in your mind based on your familiarity during prep and or additional information, it's going to trigger response, okay? So somebody says to you, oh, raise the minimum wage, and you are opposing that in that round, you're instantly going to go, whoa, yeah, the problem is if you raise the minimum wage, congressional budget office says 450,000 people are going to be thrown into unemployment because the corporations are going to try to optimize profits. The first way you optimize profits is cut the employees. So congratulations, the minimum wage is now $15. You were making eight. 
you're now fired, you're making nothing. Oh. Now, if you are still making 15, hella good. She's on the street, hella bad. So you can have stuff trigger in your mind based on what you're writing this stuff down, okay? Two, it eliminates, it eliminates contradictions. I've got a contradiction in that little packet that we'll go over shortly, but I just want to make sure we get far enough in before I end up going way outside my top of an assignment and talking to you about flows, but it does illuminate contradictions. It also illuminates omissions. Hate to say this, Santa Rosa team several years ago got to the elimination round at Novice of Harley debate. And they were prepped. And they went off to their little room. And they gave their case in a policy round. And they presented harms. They presented inherency. They presented advantage. No plan. And of course, the other team looking at their flow going, like, well, there's only like three of the four of the stock issues here. I'm going to talk about that. Leader of opposition constructive went, uh, Santa Rosa failed to prevent, present a prima facie case, which on its face would lead to adoption of the resolution because it's missing a plan. Therefore, we win, I think, of the negative. And they did win, and we deserve to lose. So it helps illuminate emissions. If you see a picture of a car, that's got three wheels, unless it's one of those weird foreign thingies that I've run into, you know that it should have a fourth wheel. Okay? And if you fail to present all four wheels in your opening speech, then you have failed in your prima facie burdens, the obligation to present a case that answers why we should change and meets all the stock issues. Stock issues being, being there's a harm, it's attributable to an attitude or law in the present system, there's a plan to fix it, and here's my advantage that flows from that plan, which is why we should adopt the resolution. Okay? Finally, it is an excellent post-round tool. Okay? You lose the round, you take notes afterward on your flow as to why the judge said you lost the round, or you look at his ballot, and you try to reconstruct it. If you want to get good at this activity, actually anything in life, but if you want to get good at this activity, you've got to throw out the window the expectation that you're going to be perfect all the time. That is such a losing way to approach life and debate. You are going to lose rounds. Okay? You want to understand why you lost those rounds, and looking forward, determine how with that same judge in the same circumstances, you can do better. I want my debaters to do redos. Okay? So in other words, you lost that round, I want you to write out for Monday how you would give that PMR, again, that Prime Minister rebuttal, so that you don't lose knowing what you do now. And practice that. And it reinforces stuff and it gets you better. Okay? Yeah. Will we get a copy of the ballot? ballot? Yes. Yep, you will. Sometimes they're electronic, sometimes they're paper. If they're electronic, it may take a while for the tournament director to email them to your coach. Okay, thank you. Okay? So we all clear on the four functions of a flow? Is that yes? Yes. Oh, oh good. Now, dun, 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 dun. we're going to use a little acronym here. This is the old Magnificent Seven, not the cool one, the new one, because I'm old. Uh, a good flow is like a good horse. You can ride it to victory. Yay! See, they're all riding to victory. Most of these people are dead. It's really old. He's dead. Died of lung cancer. He smoked. That's still great. Okay? So, what do we got here? What do riders need for the best ride? Saddles. Saddles. And what's the acronym for our way to have good flows? Saddle. Yeah, baby. That's exactly what it is. Look at this. Look at that. And it's all on your back sheet. So don't fervently write it down and get carp in your tunnel and your wrist going bad. Just look at it and write it down and cement it in your brain. Okay? Number one. Side-by-side -side arguments. This enables you to keep a flow of the arguments in the debate, having separate pieces of paper with columns on each so that you can mix and match like a Vegas car dealer. Oh, this is my counterplan arguments. Oh, this is my advantage arguments. Oh, this is my definitional arguments. Oh, this is related to the plan. You've all got it organized. Yeah. Two, we're going to go through these one by one. Abbreviated arguments. Three, dropped arguments. Four, divide papers into on and off case, which you've seen. Five, legible 
if you get all like walk like an Egyptian and hieroglyphic yourself something that you can't read 20 minutes later, that's not useful. You've got to be able to read it. Okay, if you're handing your flow to your partner and she can't read it, that's no good. It's like, well, what are you going to read that? But see, I could read your handwriting. You can't read mine, and I'm not a medical doctor. <laughs> yeah. All right? Enumerate. Now, this is really weird, um, but in the world of debate, if you don't already know this, you need to be really specific, and you need to use outline form. Okay? So when you're writing out a topicality argument, for example, you will say, A, topicality on the word agreements. I wish I did with you guys the other day. Okay? A is the interpretation. Agreements is plural, indicated by the presence of the letter S. B under topicality is the violation. The affirmative team failed to repeal more than one agreement. Singular. C, standards. Uh, the dictionary says plural means more than one. Duh. And then voters. So I literally want the A, the B, the C, and the D. Don't just get up there and go, well, the resolution was the United States federal government should repeal trade agreements. They only repealed one. We win. No, judges are going to want you to follow that template. Okay? Finally, you've got to space your arguments out, which is part of the reason you want these separate pieces of paper. In other words, let's say down here under the plan, you may only have this much space. But if on the plan, they are going to talk on case, not on disadvantage, but on case. They're going to talk about a workability argument. They're going to talk about a solvency deficit. They're going to talk about some, or some inconsistent in internal legality. You may go from this big to this big. And so try to give yourself spaces for having the opposition arguments to actually fit. So if you cram everything in with this much space, and they have this much extra response to it, it's going to be a mess. Okay? So, yes, it saddles. Ta-da! Can any of you do that? Can you do that? No. Who can do that? I did it for a little bit back then. A little? Can you do it? No, not anymore. Come not up anymore. front. No, I boycotted that. <laughs> Who can do this? Because I want a student to be able to do that little horsey thing. Can you do this? Really? <laughs> Dude, really? No? Do we get any like bonus points? Because I might lift my boycott. Okay. You know what? So we have nobody. I really had a good student do this last time. Maybe it was like almost this case of you at the suit. <laughs> Is that Kim Jong Un's brother? No. <laughs> Alright, so we good? Why isn't his brother happier? I don't think he would drop the nuclear bomb on me. Alright, so we go number one. Side by side. Okay? Anybody have any questions about side by side? You literally want to have the arguments line up so that you can follow. Okay? Float in columns. Two, abbreviated arguments. This is so important. You are not a court stenographer. Okay? It's not going to happen. So, U.S. federal government, United States federal government, USFG for USG. Okay. Here is a laundry list, and again, I've given them to you in your little packet. Don't write stuff down you don't need to. Absorb and learn before it, it wastes your brain. Um, that's on page two, mid-flow, mid mid-page. Mid okay. Supreme Court, SC, OC, Obamacare, percentage for percent, arrows, up and down, on the brink, <laughs> counter plan, DA, plan, uniqueness, perm, all that stuff. Abbreviate, abbreviate, abbreviate. Some of you that have like spent Friday nights looking on the internet for old debate rounds and stuff like that, and you hear these people talking really, really fast, and you think, how in the world can somebody listen to that and then write it down and be able to pay attention? Part of it is what they are saying is stuff that they are so familiar with, these structures that I've given you, they know it. It's there. Okay? If I say your name super, super fast, it's still your name. You recognize it. Okay? 
So you've got to be able to develop your own chart for abbreviations. Three, dropped arguments. This is really important. If you drop an argument, they're going to circle it on their flow and point it out. So flows help you see dropped arguments because there are circles on your pieces of paper. Okay? And then tell the judge. By the way, this is what happens sometimes in novice routes. You have two advantages. The leader of cons the leader of opposition gets up there and he's maybe pressed for time and he doesn't get to the second advantage. The member of government constructed the first thing out of his mouth would be judge, go to the flow of the second advantage. Notice there's no response, pull that through. Their obligation to the burden of rejoinder was to respond to the first opportunity. They missed it, that goes affirmative. Not go back on case. So just say, circle it right now, don't let them talk about it. And if they come back up and go, uh, yeah, but like I'm allowed to bring in new arguments uh, uh, in constructive, and we're still in constructive, so can I like talk about it now? Yeah, the judge may let them, but you want to say no, 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 you violate the burden of rejoinder. There was an obligation upon original initial presentation of that argument to have a response. You now silence my advocacy by making me unable to respond to yours because I had nothing to say. Ugh. Rock and roll. Okay. Now four. Divide papers into on case and off case. That's what you're doing here. So you can mix and match. Any questions on that? Legible. Make it legible so you can read. This sounds so obvious, but I do it on my own flows. I'll go back and go, wow, I know I wrote that down, but I have no idea what it said. 45 minutes ago, it was clear as crystal. Now it's mud. Six, enumerate the points. That's this business here. Structure it, structure it, structure it. Write down the sub points. You're going to get some teams that blaze through five uniqueness arguments. One, two, three, four, five. And they may be trying to play gotcha, meaning that they'll dump four of them and get the one number four that you couldn't write down. Just be careful about that. I would always, especially at novice, say, point of information, could you repeat point four? And especially if they're going quickly, the judge will be receptive to that, rather than just going, oh, I guess I missed it. Couldn't have been important. That's a problem. And seven, space those arguments so you got enough room to actually write the elongated response. We good? Yep. Would you ask them during the debate? Like if they said something quickly, would you ask them right then and there? Or would you wait for the yeah. process? No, no, no. You don't get cross-ex in parley. Yeah. yeah. Point of information. Yeah. So what was that thing you said about uh, where they don't respond to it right away? Burden of rejoinder. Burden of no, there's right a now. whole thing about I I've only got I want to do this exercise with you right now, but um, we actually had a little problem with our team uh, on this. I, I'm not gonna share that with you, but I will say I don't want you to say silence is consent because that leads into probably what you're thinking about right now that does not fly. Um, and why needlessly tear into something like that? What you simply say is it is your obligation upon your first opportunity to respond and failing that obligation, the argument is conceded. Nobody's going to accuse of you, accuse of you, accuse you of getting into that silence is consent issue which is problematic, especially in the times we live in now. And I have a 26-year-old daughter, so I'm thinking, yeah. Okay, we good? Yay! Right into the future with a good flow, baby. <laughs> All right, now it's time to practice. So, take out a piece of paper and a pen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read something to you. It's here as a transcript in manuscript form, so you can go back and check yourself as to how well. But I want you to try and apply some of the principles we did as I read this. Okay? While you're getting set up, I just want to briefly summarize what we've got down here. Tools. You obviously have to have papers and pens. I personally recommend a pen that is quick. Uh, it is not like ballpoint big pen ink, but those flowing, rolling writer stuff. I personally use fives because I write so small. You can play around with fives and sevens. It's entirely up to you. You need to find something you're comfortable with and that you can read. Uh, I think the gel pens are faster. 
Uh, okay, ready? So I'm going to read this to you. It's going to be a resolution. Pretend that you're the negative. And it's a death penalty case. So resolve the United States federal government should abolish the death penalty. So now, the US federal government should abolish the death penalty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you, pretending I'm the prime minister, and I'm going to read it at a reasonable rate of speed, and I want you to try to flow it, OK, with the numbers and the letters and the Roman numerals and the abbreviations, just like we talked about. So you ready? Here we go. All right. Yeah, ready? All right. Here we go. Thanks for all being here. Let's debate. The government team will support the resolution that the death penalty should be abolished by states and the United States federal government. Observation 1. Resolutional analysis. Subpoint A. Resolution type. This is a policy round because of the presence of the active verb should be abolished. Subpoint B. Definitions. All terms are contextually defined. Subpoint C. Decision mechanism. Today's debate should be evaluated through all inclusive net benefits. The team that demonstrates their advocacy produces the greatest net benefits should win the round. The weighing mechanism gives both sides access to ground. Observation number two, background. Today, 3,125 inmates are on death row at a cost of tens of millions of dollars. Over 1,000 people have been executed in the United States since 1976. Columbia law professor James Liebman found that one in 20 death row inmates were found not guilty. However, sometimes appeals don't act in time. And evidence has shown that 15 prisoners, 15 prisoners killed since the 1970s have been innocent. So wrongful executions have occurred and are obviously not reversible. Plan. Therefore, the government proposes the following plan. Subpoint A, agency. Since the resolution authorizes that the death penalty be abolished in the United States, the plan's agency shall be both state and federal governments. B subpoint, mandates. All legislatures and the federal government shall immediately declare the death penalty illegal, and all existing death sentences will be converted to life without the possibility of parole. Subpoint C, funding. This plan requires no funding, Act it saves money through elimination of layers of court appeals unique to death penalty cases. Subpoint D, enforcement. The plan will be enforced through executive judicial branches of government. Subpoint E, addendum. All existing death penalty statutes will be declared void. All existing death penalty statutes will be declared void. Advantage one. The plan produces one advantage that it saves money and lives. Subpoint A, uniqueness. Right now, enforcing the death penalty laws on state and federal level wastes millions of dollars, clogs courts with death appeals, and facilitates wrongful execution. Frankly, the present system cannot guarantee that exculpatory DNA evidence will always be found. Subpoint B, the link. Plan passes. Outlawing the death penalty, replacing it with a convicted murderer's life sentence without the possibility of referral. Subpoint C, internal links. Ending the death penalty, number one. Internal link, number one. Ending death penalty means no more costly layered appeals. Internal link, number two. Ending the death penalty means all executions stop, including wrongful executions. Subpoint D, the impacts. There are two independent impacts which justify this plan. Number one, plan saves millions of dollars because costly appeals stop, thereby saving money. Two, plan saves innocent lives because now nobody is executed. You can always release an innocent prisoner. You cannot release an innocent prisoner who has already been executed. For these reasons, we urge the government ballot in today's debate. Stop. So that's a sample of a prime minister constructed. You have all now just flowed that. You also have a transcript of what I wrote in your handout. Additionally, there is stuff I put that is not highlighted in the structure of the case I just read that kind of tells you a little bit of background information about some of the material. Now, quick, quick show of hands. How many of you were able to kind of stay up? Okay, I'm just going to look. Okay, let's, right off the bat, this looks nice. Okay, she's got the ABCs. I'm not looking at the particulars here. She's got some abbreviations in there, so that looks good. 
Okay? Now in yours, by the way, I'm going to hold yours up. See what she's got here? By the way, did you go on the back? Yeah. Don't do that. You'd have a separate piece of paper. Here on the tree. You would literally go to a second piece of paper. So you would have two pieces that would stop here for that opening speech. Okay? Also, I noticed, um, did you put the advantage on a separate piece of paper? Where's your advantage? On the back? Okay. They're all in different Ah, uh, okay. So remember, you would want resolutional analysis, observation, and plan on the first page. How many of you did that? Any of you? Okay. How many of you put the advantage in on a second separate page? Ah, uh, see, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're doing this. You would want the advantage on a separate page. Now, it's going to be hard when you're novices because you, let's say you write really small and you got really efficient, efficient abbreviations. Let's say you can literally get it all on one page. You're going to be tempted to do that, and it's probably not going to hurt you at the novice level, at least at your initial tournaments. But I guarantee you, as you get into open and these arguments get more complex and they get jettisoned and moved around, you're going to want to have the ease of ordering your sheets of paper. So when the person says roadmap, leader of opposition constructive, I'm going to go counter plan first and then DA, then I'm going to advantage two, then advantage one, then I'm going to advantage one, and then I'm going to go back to the LK structure and contest the definitions. Okay. With as fast as I just said that, if you have separate pieces of paper, you can easily order that. If you have them all on one piece or on the back, you're going, oh, and it's going to get all messy. That's why you want independent things to, to move it. So with you, I would condense it tiny. Okay, I'm just going to look around here. Tiny, so I would go squeeze them together. So like this, look at this. This works. This works. Okay. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Definitely squeeze it. But I like the fact that you've got the advantage over there. That's good. Now, this is awesome. That works. So try and squeeze that in there, okay? That's good. Oh, you've already given arguments to my huh? Haven't even said anything. That's good. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Now, I have five minutes. I want to illustrate something for you uh, that is maybe a little bit beyond where we should be in a novice thing, but hey, let's stretch a little bit. If you look at the bottom of page two, it starts with uh, a more example that the government team says. You see that as like the third paragraph at the bottom? Talking about corporate profits. How many of you heard about the concept of terms? Well, yeah, before I, before I do this, let me just make sure. Does anybody have any questions in connection with the mechanics of flowing or about the material that they've read there or anything we've done? Okay, before I start jumping into something else, let's make sure we're good. Any comments or questions on that? Yes. So each of those pages with the columns, one yep. page is each of those topics on the left. Yep. This is a page for the counter plan. This is a page for the advantage. Yep. Okay. Okay. Separate pieces of paper. Yep. So they're separate pieces of paper, but every single paper has columns. Has columns. Yes. <laughs> separate pieces of paper. Each separate piece of paper has columns. Okay. okay. Now, it's theoretically possible on the advantage. I don't think this will happen. I've never seen an advantage, a single advantage, that takes up more than one piece of paper. But if it does, you would want two pieces of paper for advantage one and a separate piece of paper for advantage two. Okay? This is all toward functionality of enabling you to quickly access an argument. Because let's say you get a disorganized speaker. <laughs> you don't think you're not going to see those? Maybe you're going to see them in like two or three hours. You need to be able to put it together quickly and make a response to that. Okay? What tips would you give to, in order to be able to switch? Between them? Meth. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. no. Um, the, the, the separate pieces of paper are the key. And a pen that really lets you flow. Um, I will let you come up here if you want to see the pens that I use. Um, I've used different ones. I've used pilot pens. I've used big pens. Uh, I find that these new... Uh, uh, ones that I use now by Pentel are the best, and I use the .5 for debating. I use normal life, the sevens, but I want that tiny ability to write uh, hieroglyphic like in, in small spaces, just like she did beautifully here. Okay? This is kind of what it should look like. Remember those pages I showed you at the beginning? That's what you want. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Do you recommend doing them like landscape or vertical? Um, I know some people that use legal pad and that gives them a longer way to go and some people turn it sideways and that actually gives them more space this way. You're just going to have to kind of see what you want. 
I would at a minimum use eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. Do not go with your cute little Hello Kitty notebook thing that you got. I don't even know that know that about you, but my daughter had those once upon a time. Anyone else? Questions, concerns? So let me just give you that illustration, and, and it's in here, so don't get a rash if it doesn't stick. But the flow will let you see things and hear things and then write it out. So let's say the advantage to a affirmative case is higher corporate profits, okay? And, the, and you're the affirmative, okay? So everybody put their affirmative hats on. Advantage one, higher corporate profits. And you impact that out and you have some story, but that's the tagline, higher corporate profits. First negative gets up there and goes, well, not so. We're going to link turn. It's going to rate lower corporate profits. And he gives you arguments. Okay? And then he gets too cute. Then he goes, impact turn. What is an impact turn? That's where the alleged benefit, okay, of corporate profits is actually bad. So now what has happened? You have a debater who has link turned. Advantage one, saying that plan is actually going to reduce corporate profits, and then try and get cute with their allegation that we're going to raise corporate profits, and that that's good. He actually says raising corporate profits is bad. Now, separately, either one of those arguments works, right? Because think about it. If they say raising corporate profits is going to happen, and that's good, and you can say, no, raising corporate profits is bad, that's one way to win, right? Because we say we agree, we agree, you're going to raise corporate profits, but that's hella bad. The problem is when one person in one speech both link turns saying profits are going to go down, and then impact turns saying, but that's good, then the member of government, this is all written down in your packet, the member of government gets up there and goes, you know what? We win this debate either way. Because either you believe that corporate profits are good and we're going to raise them, and we win, or we're going to lower them because they link to her and say we're going to be lowering corporate profits, and they agree that that's, that's a good thing. Now you're th sitting there going, well, why would lower corporate profits be good? Does any of you have that in your brain? Okay, the reason is, more money to corporations enable them to provide more lobbyist funds and more specialized interests, and it makes it better for them, but worse for the country overall. So I would argue that giving more money to these corporations who hardly have our interests at heart is bad. So if you lower corporate profits, that's good in terms of making democracy more representative. Okay? Now, if you write those things down and you catch that on the flow, even if it doesn't instantly click in, which it may very well, You've got that record. You go, wait a minute. They say we're raising, they say we're lowering corporate profits, and then they say impact turn, lower corporate profits are good. Shazam! I'm done. How's Sanford, everybody? Bye bye. <laughs>